Okay, we know how the mainstream media thinks. We know how the legacy media thinks. We know that they do not like Donald Jones. That's been uh, made apparent over and over and over again. I don't need to bore you with the, de- with the details, except that we have fresh new details coming in on just exactly how much they really, really hate Donald Trump. So he did this appearance over the weekend at a rally, and he used a choice of words that, you know, look, for better or for worse, he, he uses strong words, very colorful language. And unlike when they do this on the left and Joe Biden uses colorful language, I mean, when he refers to grown men that are black as boy and it gets no coverage whatsoever, when Donald Trump does something, it gets a lot of coverage, like coverage on steroids. And then it gets twisted and manipulated. And so the next thing you know, you're reading about a bloodbath everywhere and he's effectively threatening civil war if he doesn't win. And so I... Um, you know, here in, in paradise, working from paradise back later tonight. So tomorrow at home base, but I, I'm here in paradise and I'm like, wait, what is going on? What are they, what are they talking about? Bloodbath, bloodbath, bloodbath. And so I decided I wanted to go back and watch the original clip. But before I do, just, just keep in mind why I was so perplexed. Take a look at some of these headlines here. Oh my gosh. Trump says there will be a bloodbath if he loses in 2024 election, ramps up anti-migrant talk. He warns of bloodbath, absurd and violent, slams Trump's campaign. I mean, it goes on and on. Rolling Stone says Trump says there will be a bloodbath and elections will end if he isn't reelected. NPR, Trump says some migrants are not people and warns of bloodbath if he loses. So I was like, wait a second. We're going to go back and look at the original, original sound of this because... When I, I heard it, and I heard parts of it just actually on Twitter, and I, I'm just digesting it in real time, reading the actual or looking at the actual clip on Twitter, and what I had seen was actually something that related, in fact, to Mexico and the car industry and China and tariffs, et cetera. You know, a lot of people refer to economic bloodbaths. It's actually, you talk about markets, oh, there's bloodbath in the market, you know, it's screaming red. To the Dow's way down. You might say that it's in the red. It was a bloodbath on Wall Street, and so it's language that's used fairly common in a commonplace way in business. So what was interesting is that somehow the mainstream media was picking up on this one particular word. And I'm like, wait a second, let me talking about trade in Mexico. But let, let's go back and, and watch it together because you ought to hear exactly what he heard so that you can make your own judgment course right that's what's important in all of this that we don't take the mainstream media's word for anything Troy, you know mexico has taken over a period of 30 years 34 percent of the automobile manufacturing business in our country think of it went to mexico china now is building a couple of massive plants where they're going to build the cars in mexico and think they think that they're going to sell those cars into the United States with no tax at the border. Let me tell you something to China. If you're listening, President Xi, and you and I are friends, but he understands the way I deal, those big monster car manufacturing plants that you're building in Mexico right now, and you think you're going to get that, you're going to not hire Americans, and you're going to sell the cars to us. Now, we're going to put a 100 percent tariff on every single car that comes across the line, and you're not going to be able to sell those guys. If I get elected, now, if I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath for the whole. That's going to be the least of it. It's going to be a bloodbath for the country. That'll be the least of it. But they're not going to sell those cars. They're building massive factories. A friend of mine, all he does is build car manufacturing plants. He's the biggest in the world. Okay, so... It, you know, when you hear that, it certainly sounds like he's talking about what's going to happen in the auto industry. And then he says, you know, that's the least of it. So maybe that's the one little nugget the legacy media has to, to go on. You know, you got to be careful how you title this stuff. And the way they've titled it en masse, and we're talking from the New York Times, the LA Times, to everyone else in Mountville, Rolling Stones, Daily Beast, of course, it's expected from them. But you've got a lot of legacy media outlets that are saying that he is calling for a bloodbath. Again, I hear that, and I hear how he's actually reflecting upon the car industry itself and what's going on with Mexico or what's going on with China. And don't forget, this is a guy who actually did a really good job. Hey, by the way, don't even take my word for it. You know, having to have been a business reporter for the last 24 years. But you don't need to take my word for it. You can go back and look at Jamie Dimon, who's the CEO of JP Morgan Chase, who said, look, the guy had 
to with the policy on China. He did a good job dealing with China, and he was able to use tariffs and the threat of trade issues very, very effectively. And to me, isn't that what you want to be able to do? Don't you want to be able to use the economic power, the economic might in the United States of America to basically be able to encourage, and I say that with a positive spin, your foes to do what's needed for the benefit of the U.S., right? Why why do you immediately want to go to weaponry, fighting, etc.? To me, you use every economic sanction every economic tool you possibly can. And this is what he's referring to here. So again, knowing that bloodbath can actually refer to the markets and to an economic situation. In fact, we looked this up in the dictionary and it's the third definition, interestingly enough. Yes, the third definition of bloodbath. And yet that is not, that's not how it's being interpreted in any way, shape or form. You know, I remember when they did this to him in March 2020 with coronavirus, I think he referred to something like the coronavirus impeachment scam, but he was referring to it metaphorically, right? Like they were trying to go after him in a political way. Once again, they're extracting something from his words and making it, once that headline's in print, making it their own and very, very negative against him. So now you get the likes of Nancy Pelosi and everybody else out there hitting the cable air wave saying, how dare he? How dare he? How dare he? I mean, it's total freak out, which is, you know, of course, to be expected, but nonetheless disappointing, disappointing in that it, this is this is so important right now. I mean, we're in a really important time and we do have economic issues that are insanely challenging. And if we don't have the right team in place and he had a good economic team, it's why median incomes actually went up for the first time in 50 years under his administration. If you don't have the right economic team in there to manage this crisis, economically, trade-wise, border-wise, internationally speaking, then you're going to continue to run into troubles. But look, any which way you slice it, every single point you see shows you that he's ahead. And this is what is so fundamentally scary for them, for the, le- for the legacy media. So they're going to continue to paint this in the most negative possible way they can and so anything he says can and will be used against him. It's almost like an orchestrated effort. I mean, how can this not be an orchestrated effort when you're seeing things like this? And again, I'm just putting them up on the screen here for you to see how there's a chorus of media outlets all saying the exact same thing. Listen, I've worked in the media long enough to know exactly how this works. And it works by them all being in sync. They all develop the same title. Look, it happened to me. Like, they put words in my mouth. The next thing I know, I'm reading a headline anywhere. Actually, speaking of coronavirus, regional scams. I never actually said those words. It was a graphic above my shoulder on the left, but they accused me of saying something that I actually had not said at all. And in his case, they're taking a word and they are spinning that word to infer something that when you hear the tape and you can go back and listen to it again. I'm not really here. Just a reminder, make sure you subscribe, make sure you like, make sure you share. Really, really important right now. Hit the bell so you know when I'm here, when I'm live. I'm back live on the program tomorrow, back at headquarters. So sayonara to paradise, as I said. I'll see you then.